When people talk about working in GRC, they often imagine policy documents, frameworks, compliance jargon. But at the core of real-world risk management is one simple but powerful tool, the risk register. The risk register is the backbone of any governance or risk strategy. It tells the business what we're exposed to, how likely it is to happen, how bad it would be if it did, and what we're going to do about it. It's not about fancy software or certification. It's about structured thinking. And in this video, I'll walk you through step by step on how to build a working job ready risk register right from scratch. Whether you're new to GRC or trying to get noticed by employers, this is one of the best ways to show that you understand just how risk actually works. Before we dive into the table itself, let's clarify the purpose. The risk register isn't just a spreadsheet. It's a simple time map of where the business is exposed and where decisions need to happen. It's not technical documentation. It's a communication tool between GRC, cybersecurity, operations, and leadership. Think of it like this. Imagine a ship sailing across the ocean. The risk register is the radar. It spots icebergs in advance. It doesn't stop them from existing, but it helps the captain avoid it before it's too late. Your job as a future GRC pro isn't just to identify risk. It's to help the organization see it clearly, prioritize it, and respond intelligently. That is what this tool is for. So let's build your first risk register. You can use Excel, Google Sheets, Notion, anything that lets you create a table with headers. These are the core column. ID, give each risk a unique identifier. Start with R-001, R-002, and so on. Second column is risk deception. Be specific, don't write data loss, Instead, customer data exposed due to lack of encryption on remote laptops. That level of clarity matters. Third column is likelihood. On a scale of one to five, how likely is this event to occur? One is rare, three is possible, and five, that's very likely. Use your environment to estimate this. Are people using secure or public Wi-Fi? Have breaches like this happened before? Number four is impact. Again, it's a scale of one to five. One equals minimal inconvenience. Three equals regulatory scrutiny and operational slowdown. Five equal major reputation damage and financial losses. The fifth one is risk scope. Multiply likelihood and impact. For example, four into five equals 20. Higher scores equal higher priority. This is how you try age. The sixth column is owner. Who's responsible for managing this risk? Use job roles, not vague labels. IT security lead, not tech team. Seventh column, mitigation status. Track progress. Use terms like not started, in progress, resolved, accepted risk, residual risk only. These seven fields give you a full picture view. The what, the how bad, the who, and the now what. Let's walk through two entries you can build today. Entry one, ID. 001. Risk. Laptop theft results in sensitive client data exposure. Likelihood, a 4. Impact, a 5. Score, 20. Owner, IT security lead. Status, in progress. Data encryption rollout underway. Entry number 2. ID, R-002. Risk. Third-party SaaS vendor lacks updated SOC2 audit. Likelihood, a 3. Impact, a 4. Score, 12. Owner, GRC, analyst. Status, not started. Due diligence begins next week. Notice how each risk is a real scenario, not a generic label. It's written in business relevant language. This matters, especially when leadership needs to make a decision. Once you've got five to 10 risks logged, you can improve visibility in a few steps. Add a last updated column. This keeps it dynamic not static. Color code by score. Red for high risk. This would be anything with a score of 16 to 25. Yellow for medium. This would be a score between 9 to 15. Green for low. This would be a score of 1 to 8. Use filters or views. Show only high risk items or only those without owners. Add a next review date. Risk management isn't one and done. Set monthly or quarterly reviews. The point is to keep it clean, clear, and decision ready. Anyone should be able to look at your risk register and immediately see 
what matters the most. Here's the kicker. Building a register like this, even on your own, with mock scenarios, can set you apart in interviews. When hiring managers ask, what's your experience with risk assessment? You can pull up your risk register and walk them through it. You're not saying you just know GRC, you're proving it with structured logic and clear communication. It shows you understand risk prioritization, you can identify real world exposures, you're ready to plug into a GRC team and start contributing from day one. So to wrap this all up, you don't need to be in a GRC role to think like a risk professional. You don't need a certification to build a tool that companies actually use every day. Start with a spreadsheet, populate it with five to 10 real world hypothetical risks and keep refining it over time. So if you found this useful, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment on if you found this useful for you. If you found this useful, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below. More GRC breakdowns and practical cyber content coming your way.